is chapter 39 of Laura Helen Brand's Unbroken, which is the last regular chapter before the epilogue. So if you have stuck through it since the very beginning, congratulations, way to go. Um, chapter 38 was different from the other chapters in that um, Billy Graham is the preacher and he came to Los Angeles and he was having a big kind of conference. And Louie went, and he was at first really angry about it. He tried to leave, but he had this really intense religious experience. And from that moment on, Louie's done with his flashbacks. He gets rid of all the alcohol. He stops drinking. And we left Louie in the best place he's been since the beginning of the book. He's had this experience with God, and now he's ready to turn his life around, which brings us to this chapter called Daybreak. If you're following along in your own book, Daybreak is on page 384. So here we go. On a chilly fall morning in 1950, Louis walked up a long level road toward a complex of unadorned buildings. As he approached the archway that marked the entrance to the complex, his whole body tingled. On the arch were painted the words Sugamo Prison, and beyond it waited Louis's POW camp guards. At long last, Louis had returned to Japan. In the year that had passed since he'd walked into Billy Graham's tent, Louis had worked to keep a promise. He had begun a new life as a Christian speaker, telling his story all over America. The work brought him modest honoraria and offerings, so like uh, recognition and some money, enough to allow him to pay his bills and buy a $150 used DeSoto, finally replacing the car that he'd lost as loan collateral. He had scraped together just enough money for a down payment on a house, but was still so poor that Sissy's crib was the house's only furniture. Louis did the cooking on a single coil hot plate, and he and Cynthia slept in sleeping bags next to the crib. They were barely getting by, but their connection to each other had been renewed and deepened. They were blissful together. So even though they're super poor, they're happy. In the first years after the war, a journey back to Japan had been Louis's obsession the path to murdering the man who had ruined him. But thoughts of murder no longer had a home in him. He had come here not to avenge himself, but to answer a question. You can see the picture up here. This is Louis, this one. And it says he's at Sugamo, Sugamo Prison in 1950. Oh, sorry. Nope, this is Louis on the right. Louis had been told that all of the men who had tormented him had been arrested, convicted, and imprisoned here in Sugamo. He could speak about and think of his captors, even the bird, without bitterness. But a question tapped at the back of his mind. If he should ever see them again, would the peace that he had found prove resilient? Resilient meaning, would that peace be able to withstand the difficult thing of seeing his captors or his tormentors? With trepidation or with fear, he had resolved to go to Sugamo to stand before these men. On the evening before, Louis had written to Cynthia to tell her what he was about to do. He had asked her to pray for him. So Louis's going to see all the prison guards, and he's not there to kill them or to get revenge. He's just hoping he'll be able to see them and still be at peace like he has been for the last year. The former guards, 850 of them, sat cross-legged on the floor of a large bare common room. Standing at the front of the room, Louis looked out over the faces. At first, he recognized none of them. Then, far in the rear, he saw a face he knew, and another, and another. Curly, the weasel, Kono, Jimmy Sasaki, and there was the quack, who was petitioning to have his death penalty commuted. As Louis looked at this last man, he thought of Bill Harris, which, remember, Bill Harris is the one who was beaten to the point that he was really never the same. The quack beat him. There was one face missing. Louis couldn't find the bird. When he asked his escort where Watanabe was, he was told that he wasn't in Sugamu. Over five years, thousands of policemen had scoured Japan in search of him, but they had never found him. As Louis had been packing to come to Japan, the long-awaited day had arrived in the life of Shizuka Watanabe. October 1st, 1950, the day her son had promised to come to her if he was still alive. He had told her to go to the Shinjuku district in Tokyo, where he would meet her at the same restaurant where they had last seen each other two years before. At 10.05 that morning, police saw Shizuka climb aboard a train bound for the Shinjuku district. At the restaurant, Mutsuhiro apparently never showed up. 
Shizuka went to Kofu and checked into a hotel, staying alone, taking no visitors. For four days, she wandered the city. Then she left Kofu abruptly, without paying her hotel bill. The police went in to question the hotel matron. Asked if Shizuka had spoken of her son, the matron said yes. Mutsuhiro, Shizuka had said, has already died. In the corner of a sitting room in her house, Shizuka would keep a small shrine to Mutsuhiro, a tradition among bereaved or like grieving Japanese families. Each morning, she would leave an offering in memory of her son. I'm sorry, you can't see that. So she's acting, living as if her son has died. She's telling people um, that he's died. In Sugamu, Louis asked his escort what had happened to the bird. He was told it was believed that the former sergeant, hunted, exiled, and in despair, had stabbed himself to death. The words washed over Louis. In prison camp, Watanabe had forced him to live in incomprehensible or unimaginable degradation or um, mistreatment, humiliation, dehumanizing treatment, and violence. Bereft of his dignity, so with his dignity taken away, Louis had come home to a life lost in darkness and had dashed himself against the memory of the bird, right? Remember that he's, he's recognizing that the torment that he went through, his trauma and his alcoholism, was really largely due to the bird and how terrible this man had treated him. But on an October night in Los Angeles, Louis had found, in Peyton Jordan's word, daybreak. That night, the sense of shame and powerlessness that had driven his need to hate the bird had vanished. The bird was no longer his monster. He was only a man. So if Louis had traveled to Japan intent on killing the bird and getting revenge earlier, he might have destroyed him. He would have been so angry. But now, by the time Louis goes back to Japan, he goes to the prison, he realizes only then that the bird's not alive. He didn't know before this. He's okay because he's at peace. In Sugama prison, as he was told of Watanabe's fate, all Louis saw was a lost person a life now beyond redemption. He felt something that he had never felt for his captor before. With a shiver of amazement, he realized that it was compassion. And I just want to point this out, that I think the story is incredible for a lot of reasons. Louis survived crazy things. He also has, you know, his Olympic past, and he has a great personality. But I think that this moment is what makes this story really, truly amazing, that he has this moment here where he has compassion on the bird and he has compassion for his captor, the person who tortured him for years. And that Louis is able to experience that is just an incredible story. At that moment, something shifted sweetly inside him. It was forgiveness, beautiful and effortless and complete. For Louis Zamperini, the war was over. Before Louis left Sugamo, the colonel who was attending him asked Louis's former guards to come forward. In the back of the room, the prisoners stood up and shuffled into the aisle. They moved hesitantly, looking up at Louis with small faces. Louis was seized by childlike, giddy exuberance or happy excitement. Before he realized what he was doing, he was bounding down the aisle. She was like running, hopping down the aisle. In bewilderment or in like confusion, the men who had abused him watched him come to them, his hand extended a radiant smile on his face. So because of his new peace that he's found, Louis is able to go to these men who tortured him, shake hands with them, smile. The war's over for him. That is the end of uh, the book book, but stick around for the epilogue. It's so good to see what happens with Louis later in his life in the next video.